Hey guys, welcome back to Hardworking Man. If you watch Hardworking Man, you know I love buying new stuff and I did it again. I need to clean out this ditch, I need to dig some stumps out, I've always wanted a mini excavator and I finally have something that'll get the job done. Now before I get onto the new piece of equipment that I bought, I'm going to show you a huge and not expensive upgrade to any tractor as long as you have rear hydros. Adding a hydraulic top link to your three-point system can be a huge upgrade, especially for things like pallet forks, box blades, and all kinds of other attachments. Like I said, they're not very expensive and it's a huge upgrade and they're easy to put in. You're just going to take your old top link out. All right, this came off my other tractor and this is just a little bit too wide to fit on this tractor. So I'm just gonna take a grinder and knock this down a little bit and we'll get it put in. All right, if you watch Adam from Hometown Acres, you know he recently got a baggy shirt caught in one of these grinders when he was running it with one hand. So if you haven't seen that video, check it out. It might save you from heading to the emergency room like he did. So I've got my Schmedium on here. It's firewood on the hill. Matt does a lot of firewood work down in the Carolina. So check that channel out too. But I got this in, I'll suck in so my stomach's not down by the grinder and we'll get this thing knocked down so it'll fit. Alright, I got that ground down to fit now. One thing I'm going to have to do is put a spacer in here because this is off a of Cat 2 and this must be Cat 1 because this pin is quite a bit smaller and I have the spacer for it, it's just up at the property. So for now, it's just gonna have to work like this. So we'll just slide it in. We had it on the lowest setting there. Get the pin back in. Secure that. If I can, yeah, I'm shaking it so hot out. And what I did is I put a little loop on this to hang it out of the way because this is obviously a lot bigger than to fit in that. Now before I plug these in, there's a little bit of dirt on them. You want to keep this stuff clean so you're not putting dirt into your hydraulic system. The caps on these, I find they often either hold more grime in or they just break off and you end up losing them. Now I don't know which one is top or bottom, so I might switch these after they're hooked up, but for now I'll just hook it up and see if it's how I want it. Now you just use your rear remote to extend or retract it. And I did get it put in right, so that's good. So we'll make it a little longer so we can get it plugged in and our hydraulic top link's ready to go. Now you may have noticed that I have two sets of rear remotes on this tractor. This one has a spring return handle and this has a retention handle. And I got that for a reason, let me show you why. Now a lot of times when I get something new, Rachel likes to get something new, but this isn't just for her. And now we're not sponsored by Puffy. I don't even know if they're any good. We just read some reviews and we needed a new bed bad. So we got what's called the Split King, which is really just two Twin XLs. We could have ordered each our own Twin XL and saved $200, but they don't tell you that until you get it and realize what you just bought. Now this is something I've wanted for a long time. I've looked at a lot of three-point backhoes and I never pulled the trigger until recently. I got this and it's not the three-point. It doesn't hook up to your three-point arms. Those can damage tractors. They're not nearly as powerful. This has a subframe on it and this is Coyote's biggest three-point or I guess subframe attachable backhoe. Now I got a pretty good deal on this thing on Marketplace. It was hooked up to a Bobcat tractor, which are pretty similar to Coyote. But as you can see, this subframe has had some issues. It looks like at one time it broke here and they reinforced it with some steel. And with this extra steel on the sides, it will not fit into the undercarriage of my Coyote. So I bought the new subframe and the new mounting brackets. Now I have to hook them up. So on the new subframe, you can see they made some adjustments. They gusseted that weak spot. It's built a lot heavier, and I think it's gonna obviously work better. They found some weak points in their older system. They addressed it and they fixed it. That's the sign of a good company. Now, one bad thing about buying used is you gotta deal with what the owners before you did. For some reason, they welded the subframe to the backhoe. So now I have to grind those welds off, which isn't gonna be fun. So I'm gonna get cracking on them grinds. I'm not gonna make you watch the whole thing. Hopefully I can get that subframe off and get the new subframe on. 
A good thing about buying used stuff is, is you get what they bought. So I ended up with a nine inch trenching bucket and an 18 inch bucket. So I got two buckets with this thing. However, another bad thing is if there's some problems with it. Since setting this in the driveway, I can see I have a hydraulic leak somewhere. Hopefully it's a loose fitting on a hose. More likely than not, it's a bad hose. Hopefully it's not one of the controllers, but we'll find that out after we get it all hooked up. First things first, we're going to try to get these bolts out and hope they come loose. If you can't tell, it's another super hot, humid day and I'm pouring sweat. So by the end of this, I'm going to be a mess, but hopefully it goes better than I'm expecting it to. No, it's not a mini excavator. I couldn't justify the cost of one of those. And yeah, you can rent them, but I want something that I can use for small projects and don't have to have a big list of projects to need to rent it. So I decided to go with the backhoe. Hopefully it was a good decision. I know it's not nearly as versatile or useful as a mini X, but it cost me a few thousands of dollars instead of tens of thousands of dollars. All right, we got the bolts out. Now the non-fun part comes, the grinding. Trying to grind this off without messing up the backhoe, so wish me luck. If it wasn't hot enough, I'm going to have to put some long sleeves on. My hopes are that their welder wasn't too fantastic, and once I get some of this weld off, I can just... Eh, it's not looking so good. I'll keep working at it. We'll get it. Sons of wicked beasts don't give no rest, but I keep on pushing, giving it my best. Sweat and dust, dirt on my face. Hammer swings with a whole lot of grace. Work until the night calls out my name. Living this grind, it's a hard man's game. Popping, yeah, they feel like fire. Face the heat, never gonna tire. Muscle sore, heart stronger than steel. This hard work is how I feel. Sunrise to sunset, ain't no damn break. Ain't no breathing room, no slithering stake. Still, I move forward with shovel in hand. Gonna tame this wild working land. Sweating dust, dirt on my face. Swings with a whole lot of grace. All right, well, that was no joke. It took me almost an hour 
of grinding and hammering and taking bolts out. 57 minutes. It's hot. It's humid. I'm soaked. This shirt soaked through. I was getting covered in sparks. Had to put pants on and wear them sleeves. Probably could have picked a better day for this, but I got the day off work. I want to get this thing done so we can see what it can do. Digging out stumps, cleaning out ditches, a bunch of other work, water holes for deer. I got all kinds of plans for this thing, so you're not going to want to miss them. I'm going to clean those grinds up a little bit, then we'll get the new subframe on, get it hooked up, and find our leak. Hopefully it's nothing serious. All right, I used the flap wheel and cleaned up a couple of them spots a little bit. I burned through three cutoff discs. They're not great discs. They're some cheaper ones, but got the job done. I got some thunder crackling in the background, so we're probably going to get more rain. Before the rain comes, I'm going to try to get this new subframe on and get it installed so we can get it hooked to the tractor and see how it's going to work. You can hear the thunder there in the background. I'm going to leave these foot plates off right now because I'm probably going to have to take this apart to find the leak. So we're just going to get the subframe on. You can see I did cut into the backhoe a little bit, but not too bad. And the new subframe's a lot more reinforced, so it'll actually encase that. Instead of just being on one side, it goes on both sides. So let's get this wrestled into place and see if we can't beat this storm. Wouldn't you know it? <laughs> I just go inside and change into some non-sweat soaked clothes and then I get soaked picking up all the tools in the rain. But believe it or not, I actually needed this rain for my food plot. So it's actually finally a welcomed rain. But back in, more dry clothes and I guess we can get the new bed set up. Finish this tomorrow. All right, we're back. That storm was a lot more intense than I thought. We got down branches everywhere. And I think it's even more humid than it was yesterday. Another blazing hot day, but I gotta get this done. So I'm gonna have Rachel help me put the subframe into position then get it bolted up. We'll show you what we did to the tractor, hook it up and see if this thing will work. All right. Oh. oh. Rust water. All right, come forward a little more. What do you mean? Right there. All right. Is that good? Yeah, I think so. Now I'll just have to shimmy it into place. Okay. All right, now that I got those bolts started, next we're gonna put these braces on. Well, I thought we were going to. They gave me two left-hand braces, so I don't have one for the right-hand side. And as you saw in the video of me taking the old arms off, I destroyed both of them. One I bent pretty bad and the other one I cut in half, not thinking I would need them for anything. So I'm gonna try to get the one that I bent off of that old frame and see if I can use it on the right-hand side because I had plans to use this tomorrow, so. And it's Saturday, the shop's closed and it's a holiday weekend. So I won't be able to get one even if he has one in stock until Tuesday. So I'll get this one on and see what we can figure out for that other side. So as you can see, I bent that out. I was gonna try my port of power, but I think I'm gonna try to do it with this grapple first. Cause why not, if I can bend it back and then cut that one off and use it until I get a replacement. You bent it. Does not appear that's going to work. 
Did I bend it? That way. That's what I wanted. Too much, though. Too much? I mean, looks like too much to me. Let's try to rebend it. It's a curve. All right, we'll get it cut off and try to smash it flat with a hammer. I think we'll be able to get it to work. A few smacks with the hammer and that bracket was straightened right back out. I put it upside down on this frame so that it could bend the opposite direction and straighten easier. I put that on and it ended up working just great and it'll get me through until I can get the correct right hand bracket from the dealership when they open back up on Tuesday. Now with all the bolts in place, I'll get them tightened up with the impact and this new subframe is all installed and ready to go. All that's left to do is get this thing greased up and hooked to the tractor. The tractor side of things, I just had to replace the tow bar bracket with this new one that has a mount for the subframe of the backhoe. I had to take out six bolts and two nuts, slide the old one off, slide the new one on and tighten it all back up. It was pretty quick and easy. Then this goes under the center of the tractor for the front part of this frame to engage into. One thing I don't like about this setup is how much ground clearance it takes away from the tractor that already had lower ground clearance than my last tractor. With the tractor backed over the subframe, I'll clean and plug in these hydraulic lines, then engage the hydraulics. This will allow me to raise the backhoe up in an attempt to line up the subframe with the brackets under the tractor so I can drive back into it and scoop it up with the brackets and drop the pins in so it's all hooked up. It sounds pretty easy, but in all actuality, it was pretty difficult to be honest. You can see here as I back up, I didn't have the front of the subframe at the right height so it wouldn't go into the front bracket and I just kept sliding the backhoe backwards. It took quite a few attempts to get this thing lined up correctly and locked into place. If anyone has any tips or tricks on how to easier align this to get it into these brackets, let me know in the comments because I could definitely use some help. I'm sure I'll get better as I do it more but if you have a secret that I don't know about, please let me know. You can see here I'm using the bucket of the backhoe to try to change the height of the front of the machine. And I also swung it right to left to try to straighten out the subframe because I didn't back perfectly over it, which I found out is essential. Finally, with Rachel's help, I got it all in place. I didn't make you guys watch the entire painful process of me trying, but we got it in, dropped the pins in, and we're ready to grease this thing up. For some reason, the left support leg of this thing had all the grease certs removed. So I had some grease certs in the garage. I had to put them in, got this thing greased up. I got the Saker quick release grease nozzle that I do like, but it's too big for some of the fittings. So instead of having two grease guns or getting a different quick release, I just built this little attachment where I can hook it to a grease zerk and then I have the tip of the grease gun on the other end of it so I can get into these smaller recessed grease zerks. All right, there it is. It's all attached, greased up, ready to go. Make sure to hit the thumbs up, subscribe to Hardworking Man, and you'll get to see the first time I go operate this thing. Rachel said I can't dig a hole in her yard. So thanks for watching, guys. Give me any tips and tricks you have and have a great day.